thing. So with that said, um, Aaron, I'm gonna hand it over to you. And when you're ready, let me know when you want to spotlight the overhead camera. Perfect. Hello, everybody. I'm excited to do today's class with you all, um, partially because this is something I feel like I would benefit from today. Um, so good timing, it's been an all over the place day. I'm gonna put a link into the chat um, to a bunch of emotion wheels, because this is something we're going to play with today. It's totally fine if you don't have one printed out or if you don't have a printer, just bookmark this link for later for yourself, because it is a fun tool and I'm going to show a couple different ways to play with it. So that's one thing we're going to play with. Um, but we're going to start out with um, a quick exercise. So we can go over to the studio camera now. And this is just a kind of a quick warm up exercise. I would say work with something a little bit bigger. Like one of the Marabou art crowns would be a good choice because they. Uh, the nice thing about these is um it's a little bit of a fluid media, mean, meaning it glides really nicely across the page. So it's harder to edit yourself when you're using one of these. And um, it's easier to just kind of write, 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 write as fast as you can. So we're gonna start by just writing as many emotion words as you can think of, as many as come to mind. These don't necessarily have to be emotion words that you yourself are feeling in this moment. Just write as many down as you can think of, okay? So we'll just go ahead and start until you fill your page. It's okay if you run out of room on the edge of the page, just keep going. So once you have your page filled up, take a moment to consider it and notice all these emotion words. So you wrote down a bunch. Maybe they're ones you're feeling. Maybe they're ones that you're not feeling. But see if you can find maybe one or two that stand out to you as, um, yeah, those are the ones that I'm really experiencing right now. Those ones kind of are alive for me in this moment. Um, and we're going to work with those ones a little bit. So by working with them, I mean bringing them out, making them stand out a little bit more so that when you look at it, when you look at the page, your eye focuses on those things. And why do this? Okay, so one reason to do this is a lot of times we're feeling a lot of different emotions all at once. And it's hard to kind of pay attention to any one emotion. So this is a way to focus your attention on maybe one or two of them. It's also a good way to see like, what is it that I'm really feeling right now? So finding those ones that seem to be most true for you. So for right for me right now, I uh, emphasize overwhelmed, joyful, happy, proud. Uh, those are the mix of emotions that I'm feeling right now in this moment from the list that I started with. So I'm just gonna blend a little bit on this page. One thing about emotions and working with emotions in your art journal is um, the art journal itself can be the container for the emotions, but I very often, and you'll notice this as you see different pages that I create, that the pages that are about emotion explicitly, meaning I know that I'm making a page about some feeling that I'm having, I can extra focus on making a border and containing it. Right? So the art journal itself can contain our emotions, but uh, containing it on the page with a border is another way to do that. 
So I would like to emphasize these a little bit more. And I'm gonna switch. This is a, like a piece of a colored pencil stick. And I'm just gonna call out these ones a little bit more with another media. Notice which color you feel called to use. We're gonna play with color a bit later, but just go with whatever seems right. One of the things that I really, really hope that you all are starting to practice, not that this is the only way to journal, but um, a lot of times everywhere else in our life, we do a lot of editing of ourselves. And you don't need to do that in your art journal. And I'll get down the edges. Another thing I'd like you to pay attention to today as we're going through today's class is to think about the types of movements that you're making. Are you making like very small little movements or are you letting your body move as you make marks? We know that emotions and the body are very closely connected. And so the more involved that you can get your body into your art making process, uh, the more accurate it's going to feel to the emotions that you're experiencing. So I am going to set this one aside a little bit just so that some of that marabou can set. Set that one aside. And another page here. Okay, so this is a page that's kind of been pre-treated with some different media. There's a little bit of a like spray ink on here. There's a little alcohol ink and a little bit of liquid watercolor and a little more alcohol ink here that's kind of been just dripped on the page. So a good tip when you're working with different emotions is to not work with that blank page, to acknowledge that there's lots going on and there may be things that are already existing there. So I have um, one of the emotion wheels. This one I got from the site that I put into the chat for you all. Um, I'll post that on Mix also. because It's got a lot of free to use PDFs of emotion wheels. And you can see there are a lot of emotions here. What I like about this one in particular is it has kind of the primary emotions here in the center. And then as you go out from there, it gets more and more specific, right? So if you start at happy, it goes out in the next level, is joyful, interested, proud, accepted, powerful, peaceful, intimate, and optimistic. And then it goes out from there to even more experiences that are kind of those happy emotions, right? And then surprise, same thing, surprise goes out to scared, startled, confused, amazed, excited, right? So it kind of spans out from there. And then to shock, dismay, disillusion, perplexed, astonished, awe. Right, so you can hear in these words, like it's a lot of vocabulary. Someone was talking on Mix about their journal needing more of a vocabulary. And we're gonna play with that with words today a little bit, but also in mark making. So I'm gonna glue my emotion wheel in. And if you don't have one printed out, you absolutely can make your own, make a circle and then break it up and put a bunch of different emotion words in there. Maybe you use the emotion words that you wrote down in our warm up exercise. Okay, so I have my emotion wheel in here. And then what you can do is go in and kind of say, which are the ones that really, which words here do you really resonate for me? And again, it might be what you're feeling right now or it might just be words that you typically like, right? Emotions that you enjoy feeling or that emotion words that are interesting to you. 
Um, I'm going to skip over some of those negative ones. It's also kind of a, an opportunity to reflect on words that are maybe never true for you. So I just passed by the word bored because I don't think I've ever in my life been bored. <laughs> Partially because mostly I carry my art journal around. So how could you be bored if you couldn't make art? I love the word perplexed. I don't particularly feel it right now, but I just like it. The other thing that you're seeing as I'm doing this is because the words go in different directions, you kind of have to keep turning the journal. And that can be useful just to, to kinesthetics of it, the movement of moving your journal around. Sometimes you sit down to make art and your art just stays in the same orientation to you. And it can be useful to turn your journal upside down, any of your art, to turn it upside down, to turn it sideways, to look at it from a different view. Okay, so I have a few words called out there. And I'm gonna dig into my ephemeral envelope and see if there's anything in here that feels like it wants to be in conversation with this. I'm looking at the color and actually this color, wrapping paper with some other marks on it seems about right. So another reason to play with something like this emotion wheel and to look at all these different words that we have for the emotions that we feel. There's a really interesting theory called emo diversity. And it means the kind of the big wide range of words that we have to talk about our emotions. Um, and there's a theory that the more specific you can be, so not this, these center words, but the more that you can get into these outer rings and be very specific with the words that you use to describe how you feel, the healthy you, will, you are. Not just mentally healthy, but also physically healthy in some studies. So that's that's pretty interesting to me. I've got a little bit of map here and I feel like there's something about the map and well, the chart, actually, this is a boat chart. Like the color is just right in here. So what I'm doing right now, I'm not really even thinking about the words that I highlighted. I'm just looking at color on the page and playing with I like to, when I'm journaling, I like to kind of go back and forth between, I'm focusing on the content, like what is this page about? What is this page saying? And the aesthetics, how does this page look? And also the process and the experience. How does it feel right now to be making art? And when you're focusing on all those things, it can feel like a lot, but it's also like it's all happening all at once. And you don't have to intentionally think about it. It's happening and you're experiencing it. blend this in a little bit with the Marabou Art Crayon. If you haven't experimented with this yet, it, it does this really neat thing where you can kind of fill in where you stuck something down with collage. It's almost like it, uh, it's almost like 
like grout in um, mosaic. Like you're helping it attach to the page in a different way. Obviously it uses quite a bit of pigment to do that, but visually I think it's worth it. Sometimes when I'm collaging different elements onto a page, I like to show where the edges of those things are. And then sometimes I like to see if I can almost sculpt it into the page paper itself. So it feels a little bit chaotic to me right now, like the pieces are you know, all over the place, a little, too, a little too many things happening at once. And I feel like this orange here needs to blend in a little bit more. You see how visually like this orange is just a little bit, a little much. <laughs> I'm gonna use an orange wax crayon. And again, just to blend it in a little bit more. And with my eyes, when I'm doing something like this, where I'm just kind of mark making and filling in areas, my eyes are also kind of multitasking. <laughs> They're kind of looking around the page and saying, like, where am I going next? Where am I going to put this material next? Kind of focusing on what you're doing and also planning the future. When all else fails, polka dots are definitely the answer. <laughs> and because of the way that this nautical chart is, it kind of has a little bit of that polka dot look. I think that'll help blend this a little bit more. Okay, this is going to be a weird analogy, but stay with me. Um, when, when you raise baby chicks, they have like the really cute phase, right? They're fluffy, they're cute. And then they go through this really horrible, awkward phase where they're kind of gangly and their legs are too long and they don't have their feathers all the way in yet. And they're kind of like awkward little teenagers. And I feel like art journal pages are like that sometimes. There's like this awkward phase where it's just not quite fully formed. You're not sure what you're going to do next. And you just have to kind of keep with it, right? If you want the eggs from those chickens, you've got to keep raising them, even when they're in their funny, awkward stage. I happen to think they're very cute when they're like that, but they definitely are funny looking. So that feels better to me with these polka dot bits in here. It feels a little bit less jumbled. Uh, 
I'm going to set this one aside. And what I'll do after the matte medium dries is probably go in with some watercolor and let the words, the emotion words that I've called out as important stand out and blend the others back a little bit. So I might actually use like a light bluish gray to kind of blend those words away a little bit. Okay, so I had another thought about how to use an emotion wheel. This is a tiny one that I do. And if you still have in your ephemera envelope, if you still have some of these little mica washers, I was thinking there might be a cool way to make it so that your emotion wheel can turn. Or like it has the possibility of doing that. So if you have a brad, you could put a brad in and then put your little micro washer there. But actually, as I'm looking at this, I kind of like it. It's being stuck there. Like not worrying about the mechanics of it. Bring it in the center. Maybe what I'll do is glue that in the center and leave the edges open so that I can tuck things underneath it so that they stick out. It's a use case for the little um, the keeper burners. Another way to play with it. And actually, we were talking on the other live stream about like how to let yourself use precious ephemera. Right, to not be precious about it. And so I've been kind of saving my lily, but I wonder, wonder about just like ripping the Band-Aid off <laughs> and cutting this apart. So I like the, like the colors here in the marbled paper that I got and the colors in the lily kind of beautiful together. So if you have, if you're making pages about emotion, um, sometimes they can be messy. Sometimes it's good to use precious materials, right? To let yourself use those things. Dignify your emotions with the beautiful materials. And something I do sometimes when I'm collaging in my art journal. And again, I'm wondering or thinking about those edges is I'll cut part of it and then tear the other part of the paper. So I have like a crisp edge and then a torn edge because that will then integrate into my journal differently.
So when I'm gluing thicker paper into my art journal, I can use the glue stick very liberally. <laughs> it's also hot here, so that helps in sticking in the heat. And I've got more lilies. I could have one kind of coming in from down there, but maybe that makes more sense. Hey, Aaron, this is Sarah just jumping in here. Um, I guess while I'm on here, I wanted to tell you that you have an hour left, but okay. <laughs> watching, watching you cut out a flower is mesmerizing. <laughs> it is so intricate and your scissor work is <laughs> so impressive. That is all. That's really what I came on here to say. <laughs> the scissor, we should, we should start. Art Supply Youth Olympics and like <laughs> routes around a flower. <laughs> so this is the training. <laughs> I don't think I can compete with some of the people that do like that really intricate cut work though. Mm. So, but it is, it is fun to use very sharp scissors. Don't even get me started on scissors. I have a whole diatribe about scissors because sometimes people give people scissors for their quote, safety. <laughs> and dull scissors and child-proof scissors are so much more dangerous. You'd be way better off having a conversation with people about being safe with their materials than giving them something that's supposed to protect them. So they just get frustrated. Can't tell you how many people like, don't want to make art because they get dull scissors and then I would I don't blame them I wouldn't want to cut out intricate things with dull safety scissors this doesn't sound fun okay so I've got one flower going underneath one on top and I actually think since we're talking about using precious materials let's try to figure out what I did with it uh, this might be another a good spot to use some more of the things, some more of them, I guess. So I already used the big circle that I got, but I have these little ones. I'll show you a fun trick I've done. So this is real mica. And the bigger circular ones, we didn't have, we haven't really had a chance to talk about this, but the bigger circular ones are actually for plumbing supplies, the washer for plumbing. That was when I first encountered them, and I was like, "What do you mean for plumbing? This is obviously this is an art supply." <laughs> and I think these smaller ones are for like electrical uses. Someone will have to tell me if I'm right about that, but I think they're fabulous for art supplies and. If you're speaking of little fiddly paths, if you very carefully pick at it with your fingernail or with a, a sharp tool, you can break these apart. So you may have gotten three or four, but you actually got way more than that. So this one that I put in the center is a whole bunch all stacked up. So you can peel these apart. You end up with more. And there's something really, I don't know, kind of 
instantly archival about using these. Like they look old as soon as you put them onto your art. It's like vintage. And if you like playing with these, you can also get like bigger sheets of it, which is really fun. So for the sake of visuals, I'm going to use tacky glue if it, if I was not worried about you all being able to see what I'm what else I'm doing, I would probably use Elmer. But this way we can get the clear effect right away. And I'm gonna let the glue kind of go out the sides a little bit because it'll create a little bit of a resist later. So when I come back in with some other materials later on the page, I have something else to play with, like another texture that I can play with. So looking at this page now and kind of strategizing for the future. I'll probably pull in a little bit more red to bump up the red from there. I don't know if I will highlight any of the emotion words or not. I think I just want to have it be about all the different emotions that one can feel um, and not necessarily call out any particular one. And I might do, and maybe I'll do that right now. I was going to say, I might do just like some light graphite lines. Thank you. So everything else that I've been doing so far today has been kind of big, bold marks. But there's something very soothing about light pencil lines. They don't need to be perfect. I'm not using a ruler. notice how the pencil lines feel different on the different page parts of the page. Like the, the cut out vintage book page is going to feel different than the page of your journal. It feels different than other textures you may put onto the page. And doing this light line work, this is another question that came up on Nick about like how to expand your vocabulary of different types of lines for different types of reasons and marks for different types of reasons. And if you're feeling overexcited, too much going on, stressed out, any of those kind of anxious, worried things, making very light, repetitive marks like this can be very soothing. So it's a, it's a good trick to have. And the other good thing is it adds an interesting texture onto your page. And you might end up covering some of it up later, but it feels good in the moment of doing it. And adds a little more depth to your art that you can expand upon later. I'm starting to space these out a little bit bigger and fade them. So this page is starting to come along. And I'm going to set it aside so that glue can dry. Let's get out another page here. Perfect. So I teased this one on, I think it was on Instagram last night that I started playing with this page because I had swatched out some watercolor into different hearts for us to play with today is thinking about color and emotion. Um, and in the process of doing that, uh, I was working on a page that I had already um, uh, sprayed some alcohol ink on. And the red marks here were already here on the page. And to me, it looked like you know, a pointing finger. So I drew that over the top, but like left the red marks and kind of went outside of them to show that the red was already there. And I was thinking about this page with like, about this idea of like, what colors do I associate with different emotions? 
And this is something that is really important to me as an art therapist because there's a lot of misconceptions that like if you use this color, it always means that. And that is just not true, right? Because different people use different colors for different reasons, right? There are strong cultural associations that we might have with certain colors, but you as an individual also have all of your individual experiences and memories that make your palette, your colors that you use about your emotions, only yours. So this is your permission slip today to create your own palette of colors for your emotions. I'm just putting a little bit of tape in here to symbolize this idea of creating a system. Line work also. So I numbered my little hearts here when I can read. And I was thinking that I could write emotion words with each one. I'm playing this out. So um, I am just going to respond to them as I do this. I am going to make you mouth emotion. <laughs> Maybe it's describing experiences that have emotions associated with them. Again, with this, try to work faster than you think you want to so that you can't edit yourself. Uh, kind of a random little collection of memories and some emotions. And I was thinking about this idea of like what happens when you feel them all at once, right? What if all of these things are happening all at the same time? Like how can you calm yourself down? How can you decide like right now I'm just going to feel this thing, right? Or what is the thing maybe that centers you? What is the place that you can go that will calm you down? when you're feeling that all at once feeling. So I'm going to use this. First you're doing this and you feel like you have one that you can't think of what it is also totally fine to put a question mark sometimes we're not sure what we're feeling or what memory or emotion goes with a certain color I am a big fan of question marks, especially in our journals. Having the answers is for everywhere else in the world, 
it's okay if you don't have the answers in your art journal. Something else that you'll maybe notice as you watch my hands working on lots of different pieces, um, besides the fact that they're getting very dirty. Um, <laughs> but uh, you'll see me hold a tool in a bunch of different ways, even in the same space where I'm working with it. And that's because I'm, again, looking for that different voice, the different ways that that tool can make mark. We played the, with this a little bit in the first live stream with the pencil. Um, so just be aware of that, that if you feel like you're not quite sure how to use something, think about holding it differently and try it that way. Okay, so since there's quite a bit of the kind of golden yellow on this page, I'm going to go right up to the edge of my here and just add a little bit more. Because these are water soluble. Blend it a little bit. They don't move around a lot, so it's different from like a water base or a watercolor marker, but it will blend a little bit. Okay, so thinking about what is my experience of when I'm feeling all these things all at once, how can I get it down to one emotion at a time? So for this, I want to write with something a little more bold. I'm going to write three things that work for me to help me calm down from feeling too many things. So the first one. Please. And that's one for Probably no surprise. And the third one. Go outside. So breathe, make art, go outside. So those are the things that help me to kind of come to a calmer place after feeling lots of lots of emotions all at once. Um, preferably doing all three of these things all at the same time. So maybe I'll add a little bracket here. So feeling all of these all at once, balanced out by doing all of these things all at once. Okay. Hope you have fun doing a little bit of pulling of color. And I wanted to shift into so this page has some mark making on it already, but I wanted to experiment with making different kinds of marks for different kinds of reasons. Okay, so thinking about a vocabulary of mark making. So we have the lines like we were making with the pencils, and this has kind of a certain feeling to it. And we have like a big bold line. This is the midline of brush line that I'm playing with now. And then we have some meandering. Now I can't unsee this as a hand <laughs> with red mark. <laughs> and then of course we have stippling lines, stippling marks. So doing this with every tool you get is a great 
way to explore through the, the way that making marks with the tool feels. Additional cross hatching, kind of devolving into scribbly, and then how it would just really fill in an area like this. The layers that this makes. Okay, so now we have these different types of mark making, and you can think about is there a feeling that I have from each of these, right? Do they make me think of anything or do they um, suggest a certain way of being? So I'm gonna take a very fine pen. I'm gonna write whatever word comes from, for me first when I look at those marks. I wrote order, balance, freedom, unsure, defiant, frenzy, wild, and solid. So thinking about how the different types of marks that you make can inspire different feelings and then thinking about how can I use that, right? If I'm making an art journal page about a time where I feel unsure, then maybe I want to use this kind of mark with this kind of tool. So I'm thinking about how you can use your vocabulary of marks to make pages um, communicate that without words, right? We've been talking too about like the times that you maybe don't have words and how to make art without any words in it, which um, is, is one of the real benefits of journaling and art journaling is you don't always have to have words. So I have this on my desk and I Hold it because it's got the dots like this, but it's also got some lines and it also has some color with it. It's got the yellow here and the red here. Um, I found this picture today. It's been hidden in a box. And uh, yeah, so printed uh, in 2019. <laughs> so it's been in a box since before the pandemic, or maybe it was in my desk at my old work. Could be. And I thought this might be kind of an interesting one to put on. Color wise, it seems to be in, in communication with these marks, with everything else going on in this page. And I have <laughs> it's kind of a theme going on with like emotion pages and images of flowers. I have a book up on my bookshelf up there somewhere that uh, it's about, it's like a Victorian book about what flowers to give for what occasion. And it's not just celebrations. There's like a bouquet for someone that you hate or a bouquet for someone who swindled you in business. <laughs> a pretty fabulous piece of ephemera. I should bring it for ephemera hour sometimes. I've kind of been into this very doodly mark making lately. I think for me, it's about like there's a lot of things going on in my world. And so making these kind of marks feels really good to me.
So another form of mark making that can be really helpful. We talked about the light pencil line that can calm you down a bit. And this can also, right? So making spaces for yourself, making a doodle and then filling it in with color. I'm not gonna do it everywhere, but just in a couple of spots. I like that the color of this pen is so similar to the color of the alcohol ink that was already on the page. Aaron, jumping in here real quick, just to say we have about 35 minutes left. Perfect. So I just want to show one thing here that this pen, because that's a you know, weird water soluble colored pencil, this brush pen will blend it a bit. Look how satisfying that is. I feel like you can all probably guess what I'm gonna do before I do it, but I always like stop and then I see one more thing and I go back in and add a few more marks. I think I do that on every single live stream that we do. I'm just verbally wrapping up while I'm still making marks. It's like lingering at the door when you're leaving a party, right? like that conversation that happens in the doorway that ends up going a lot longer than anyone anticipated it would. All right, so why don't we pause here and come back and see if people would like to share about what they've been making or anything that is on their mind. If you want to share, feel free to physically raise your hand, virtually raise your hand. You can unmute yourself. I'll spotlight you. Um, while everyone is still working, Erin, um, I actually have a question for you. Yeah. Um, I've been studying this emotions wheel, um, and it's really interesting not just to stick in your art journal. Um, how do you use this in, in real life or in therapy? Yeah, great question. So um, a couple different ways, sometimes uh, with people that maybe have trouble naming their emotions or they always say the same thing, right? Sometimes we get stuck in ruts, right? We get stuck in ruts in our art and we get stuck in ruts um, emotionally. And sometimes it's habit, right? If, if I come into a room and I always say, when someone asks how I, how I feel, and I always say the same thing, right? And so trying to help someone grow what that is, right? So if they're feeling um, fear, kind of branching out from that fear and trying to discern what is it that you're actually feeling? Like maybe fear, yes, but what else, right? It's kind of yes anding your emotions, right? Like using kind of the improv idea of, um, yes, I'm feeling sad, but what else am I feeling? What else is in that sadness? So getting a little bit more, um, uh, specific about it. And then another way that I've used the emotion wheel that's really fun is to use it with art history. So to get out an art history book or an artist monograph and look at it and use this emotion wheel and kind of come to what is this, what is what emotion am I feeling from this art that I'm looking at? So those are a couple ways. And then I use it a lot in collage because it's just interesting. It's super interesting. I feel like I could walk around a museum with this and just be there for hours figuring out how I feel. Yeah, yeah, how you feel, how the art, the, the maybe subject and the art feel, and then maybe how the artist felt, right? There's so many different layers that you can use with that. Really cool. Um, Rodney, I see you have your virtual hand up. If you wanna unmute yourself. I will, and I'm going to show you some pages real quick. Awesome. 
We'll do that. So I'm gonna, I'm bring... Here we go. I'm gonna lower yeah. your hand and I'm gonna spotlight. Let's see. Okay, so. Okay. <laughs> So let me turn this around so I can um, show you so on my iPad. I don't use my iPad that much, so how do I? We see a hand and your face. <laughs> I think, Rodney, if you lightly tap your screen at the top, um, if you lightly tap like the middle of the screen and then the top left hand corner, you should see the little camera icon with the little reverse symbol in it. I don't use iPad that much, so oh, there we go. Oh, you lost it. Okay. Just had it. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. No worries. Um, so. There is my, I've never written uh, words down on paper. Can you see that okay? Yeah. And then I underlined it. I put a border on there, which I think is important. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it is, but it seems to make a difference. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> yeah. Um, just. Pardon me, I'm being real simple about this, but I've never done this on paper. I've never done that. Okay, I took the map out of my ephemera. Oh, great. And I did the markings. I <laughs> did little dots. I see your dotted line. Yeah. And then I decided to use one of the other pictures which is really beautiful and colorful out of the ephemera. So it was really nice. Yeah. You should nice. have seen my studio when I was making that marbled paper for you all. <laughs> well, it's beautiful and it's it depicts what a you know what I would like to see my future colorful life to be. Wonderful. I thought that was excellent. So that's it. I just want to do that. But that got me started and I would be very happy to continue this on using this kind of stuff because uh, to me it's felt really cathartic in and in almost immediate way of putting down I thought oh this can this do but I thought wow it's pretty cathartic yeah okay thank you so much Rodney bye-bye thank <laughs> thanks for sharing Anybody else feel like showing off what they made tonight? <clears throat> or maybe it's a work in progress, which is totally fine. We have about a little less than a half hour left. So, um, all right, if you want to get back into making something, uh, we can. Jill reaching. Are you reaching for your unmute, Jill, or your hand? Oh, raising? are you waving? Oh, hi. <laughs> Take it away, Jill. All right. Um... So I started making some hearts. Mm. Um, I was literally just pulling out every acrylic pen I have mm. <laughs> and choosing colors. And then I will go back in later and write an emotion. Um, but I intentionally put gold and silver and black because I feel that those are very powerful for me as well. Mm. And then um, I wanted to work on this, but it had, it didn't quite dry, but I sprayed my page <laughs> with those acrylic sprays. They're so much fun. Um, yeah, so, and then I did my little page here, but it's backwards, but not quite sure where we're going to go with this one, but I feel like it needs a lot more work. <laughs> yep. Sometimes pages just have to rest for a while until you figure out. What you want yeah, to do for sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Jill. That was a really good warm up. Um, I feel like we've done a version of it before, but you know, Monday nights or Monday afternoons, wherever you are, 
it's tough to get through the day. So that was a good warm up. Warm up. It's a good thing to do anytime. It's such mm. a good exercise. And you can do, you can, doesn't always have to be about emotion either. Sometimes you can just be like, how many memories can I think of right now that I can describe in two to three words, right? And just like write them down. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, just, and, and the freer the material is, the better, right? The easier to write with. That's why those Marabou art crayons are so great for that because it's, just like you get that lipstick drawing feeling and it's so good. So true. We got a comment from Pam agreeing that using the art crayons with the emotion warm up. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Anyone else want to share? I have a couple more things I can show. <clears throat> we'll do well, another. Do with, uh, oh. with what the uh, now that you mentioned that marabou, the one thing I found out about that, I don't know whether you guys find it true, but you can't be too overly perfectionistic with it. You just have to kind of just throw it on there and it's going to do whatever it's going to do. And it feels like it's kind of melting or smoothing yeah. out her body into the paper. It, it's, a, it's a very unique thing, but it's not, you, if you want to be uh precise that's not where that's not where you're going to use it so i yep. love that yep so thank you for that mm -hmm. thanks for sharing i'm going to spotlight the overhead camera again so we can get back into work mode okay so i wanted to show something first um this was uh a art journal response like in the moment to some angry words and so I was feeling those angry words that someone said to me really strongly and so I thought well I'm gonna make an art journal page about this and this person will never see it but it will make me feel better so I made this speech bubble and I thought about like how do those angry words feel right if you're gonna write something about an emotion that's kind of a strong emotion, figuring out how you can write it in such a way that it like captures the feeling of it. So that's what was going on there. Um, and then I did kind of my response down here in the in the thought bubble. And then the next day I came back in and wrote with a white pen and then went back over it with uh, watercolor because the next day everything was fine. It was like these angry words never happened. So maybe I did a little bit of magic with uh, my art journaling about it. Um, I also, in the in the time that I was working on this page, I was drinking tea that was by this brand called Roar, which is such a great name for tea. And uh, the particular blend was humble and exquisite. And I thought that was kind of a good antidote to these angry words. So I wanted to share that uh, about a page made while feeling an emotion. And then I had another one that I wanted to share, and then I want to share a technique with you all time for that. Um, it's just kind of like this stream of consciousness writing about feelings that you're having in a place. So uh, this was a page I was working on when I was having this really intense feeling of nostalgia. And I was going to write that on here kind of in reflection later. And I was kind of writing all the experiences and memories and feelings that I was having at the time. I was uh, sitting in a, kind of a side, a quiet side hallway, waiting for a meeting to start at an art college. And I was looking at a bank of lockers and I had all of this uh, nostalgic feelings about sitting in a hallway when I was an undergrad <laughs> in the art building. Um, and it was just really interesting little memory experience. Um, then I found these great brushes the other day that just definitely needed to be on this page. Then summing it all up with a single word. So I'm gonna set that aside and bring back over, bring this page back over. And the art crayon I set quite a bit. But I wanted to show something that I've showed 
to after of it several times. And I wanted to show kind of how. Um, so this is a regular printed newspaper. So it won't work, unfortunately, with the newspaper club newspaper. It has to be um, printed in a certain way. And this is scotch tape that I've kind of made messy with my fingers. But if you make it a little less sticky, and I find just running it over my fingers a few times will do that, you can lift the pigment up off the page, off of the printed newspaper. Let me get the And I am going to put this kind of right in the middle of all the mess here. <laughs> so then you have uh, the opportunity to bring some interesting text back into your parts of the And uh, fun uh, behind the scenes. <laughs> uh, next time we have a live class together, it will be I believe from where I am moving. So we won't be here in the studio. It'll still be me and the parrots somewhere. Um, but we'll be coming to you from Healdsburg. And this is part of why I'm feeling lots of emotions right now. Excited emotions and worried emotions and a lot of things. So kind of identifying the source of what you're feeling is also useful in your art journal pages. So I've got this whole list of emotions and now going in, adding more pigment. And I'm I'm laughing right now because <laughs> the we were talking about how the colors are yours, right? The, the things you associate with the colors, that's just for you. You don't have to listen to what anyone else says the color is. And I'm sitting here painting with happy yellow. <laughs> so I guess the paints have different ideas. It doesn't have to mean that you have to use it for that reason. So I have another thing. This is also uh, in a box that was from my old office that I was going through as I was packing things. Um, fun thing, I don't know how many of you went to the um, Color Factory show. Super fun, um, ridiculous viral art experience feels like a million years ago that things like that happened. And then I found this scrap of fabric um, just on the floor when I was cleaning some things up in the studio. And I thought this would be kind of a good, um, you can't put that in an art journal moment. <laughs> but you absolutely can. Where there's adhesive, there's a way. And this actually isn't all that thick of a card. This little card was the way that you got the pictures of yourself from inside the exhibit. So funny that I'm using this today because I was just thinking about wild things I used to do, like flying across the country just to go to an art show. <laughs> that feels like a long time ago. So I have this little face. And I thought that was just kind of a fun, a fun little stand in for a lot of different emotions, right? Like it's not, it's kind of happy, but it's not overly happy. And you can insert whatever emotion feels right for you. So maybe you pick something from the emotion wheel to add. And you could even 
I have a whole bunch of these printed out because I use them in a class that I teach. You could even taste like a slice of the emotion leaf, <laughs> emotion wheel pie and add that in because it just kind of visually is an interesting thing. Almost like a speech bubble coming out from our little guy there. There's all these spirals. So, so Rodney talked about how you can't be precise with the art crayon. There is one way that you can be a little more precise with it. On the whole, it's kind of a big, bold mark, but you can. I've showed this to you all before, but I think it's worth showing again that when you build up a layer, a couple layers of this, you can go in with this is mechanical pencil. And then you can do really precise things, right? You have to work fast when you're doing this because it has to be pretty, the pigment has to be pretty fresh. Then you can get some really interesting precise marks. So precision even in the messy bold marks. Another use for a mechanical pencil that you may not have thought of. <laughs> Scribbles in. So shaping into a pretty fun page. I'll probably go back in and blend this around a little bit more. <clears throat> Maybe I'll do a little bit of that. So another thing that I'd like you to go away from today with is uh, the speed that I'm working, I'm working pretty fast, right? And um, especially when we're using our art journals to kind of discharge or uh, put out emotions that we're feeling, try working faster. Now, this might not always be possible, but um, especially if you're feeling kind of, kind of some of the negative emotions, sadness, depression, right? Um, working fast can help bring up, bring up your energy a little bit, you feel a little bit more excited, you make some marks. It doesn't fix it, but in the moment, it can feel a little bit better. Help remind you that you can make marks. <laughs> I guess it has the kind of the shape of that and then the shape of this seems to be in conversation with each other. This might seem totally out of context. So I'm just going to put it here and then decide later if I want to do it in. That's kind of interesting to add in 
a little bit of something else kind of would call back to that other page too. So we'll see, because these also seem to be in conversation with these little marks, right? Thinking about repetition and pattern. To be determined. <laughs> Stay tuned. All right, Aaron, we got about 10 minutes left. Anyone else want to share? I don't want to not hear from someone if someone wants to share. Otherwise, I have two more things I can show you. If you have any questions, also feel free to drop them in the chat. No pressure. This definitely feels like a Monday night workshop. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Not a bad thing. I have two more things I can show you all. So I can give you a little update on the piece from last week, Friday um, or Saturday. Um, so I went back in, I added some more pigment in this. Um, one thing that I really loved that happened was rubbing the colored pencil against the um, the paint chip. Um, I haven't experimented with that before, but it because the paint chip kind of has a funny coating on it, it is a really beautiful blend. So I want to explore more playing with that. So that's how that page is shaping up. But I think I'm going to do a few more things to it. And then this is a page that I've been working on and the peel the black paper off. Um, and this kind of has something to do with what we're talking about today, this idea of emotions and feeling um, a sense of awe. And that's the feeling that I have when I look at something like this, like the trees and then the night sky and all the stars kind of wonder of enough little flip out page. So I think uh, probably what I'll do down below. I did a little watercolor, but uh, Maribu on there was nice. Now I'll probably go in maybe with some more black. Um, I was using a big, thick, fold black pen, but I realized it was going to bleed through to the other pages <laughs> pretty badly. So it's it's this one, Sarah, this super bold pen, which is so satisfying to use, but like leads through onto everything. Handle with care. <laughs> it's very satisfying, but you have to make those marks in the right place. So I don't know. I this part it's it's kind of cool because the the trees disappear and you're not really sure that it opens up and then it does. I feel like it would be fun to have a little reveal in here, like maybe something or someone standing here in the tree, but still figuring that out. A dark brush point here. So another emotion expression tip, the more fluid it is, the more fluid the emotion feeling will be. And that's something to be a little bit careful of and feel overwhelming and also feel really satisfying. So big fluid mark, feel awesome, but just handle with care, I guess is the message there. I haven't played with the, with the marabou before, and it's pretty fun. Always finding new ways to combine materials. And the reason I added in the United States with all the little location markers on it was thinking about uh, kind of what we've been talking about today, this idea of like travel and lack of travel and change and moving and um, 
what if where you are is just right. And it's looking up and seeing the stars. I'm excited because the place that I'm moving is going to be even more star view than I have where I am right now. So stay tuned to my Instagram for some night sky pictures in the future. <laughs> see me doing it again and then closing down with my words and then coming back in with more words and again. <laughs> I need to bring a little bit more of the wonder of enough into my approach to materials sometimes. <laughs> Aaron, you know, I keep going back and forth with this page. Uh -huh. It's been open for viewing for a good like three minutes now. And I'm thinking, is it done? Yeah. Yeah. Without something there hidden, just having it be done. Yeah. There it's is. So it's, done, it's done use. <laughs> uh -huh. I'm literally wondering the wonder of enough right now yeah like, is it enough yeah I mean it, it it could be really nice with some maybe something sort of like translucent on top I don't know I like this weird paper this is like um it's not wax paper it's very you can hear it's like very crinkly um mm -hmm. it was packaging it's like a new form of very eco-friendly packaging so no, no. Teresa says it needs a UFO <laughs> and a Bigfoot. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> not the worst idea. <laughs> okay. Sorry, everyone. I'm not like super up on big on UFO shapes, but. He's on this kind of Saturn like. <laughs> oh my. Well, if I'm going to do a little bit of collage seeking tonight, and if I come across a Bigfoot, I'll take that as a sign that it needs to go in there. So maybe that'll be. <laughs> if you find Bigfoot, I think we got bigger problems. <laughs> <laughs> I am cutting up some very strange magazines. So mm -hmm. it is by the realm of possibility. Amazing. Well, um, we've got about three minutes left. Any last words that you want to leave us with tonight, Erin? This has been really wonderful. Um, I think the best thing to do is to try uh, kind of like the just add art so if you're making art and you're trying to express something and you're just not quite finding the right thing, just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Try a different material, try a different um, approach, try a different type of mark making and you'll find it. Um, and then also keeping track for yourself about what felt really good or helpful or useful and remembering that so that when you're feeling that feeling again, you can come back to it. So like, oh, this helped me express the joy I was feeling so well. Like this color is joy to me. So let me come back to that when I want to feel joy. And there it is again. Love it. Awesome. Um, before we close up, anybody else want to share anything? Share their art, share a question? This has been quite the weekend intensive, so <laughs> I applaud those who came to both sessions this weekend. Very exciting way to start your week, end your weekend and start your week. So, um, Aaron, thank you so much for your time and for this lesson today. Great work. Everybody, thank you for joining us live. Uh, the recording will be posted to the um, mix group probably tomorrow. Um, and we'll also send an email about it as well. So when it's live, we'll let you know. 
but yeah forward to seeing what you all share so please do share on mix or instagram and tag us so that we can see it yes awesome all right great work everyone have a wonderful rest of your evening bye thank you <laughs>